this and that, right? But while she's doing that, Anthony, tell us about you. Um, cool, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm a director based in, in London. Um, I've been, uh, I used to work at Red Bull Media House. So I did a couple of years there, um, working on sort of events and, and stuff for Red Bull. Um, I've been freelance for the last two years. Um, I like making stuff that's kind of, I don't know, a bit kind of modern and fresh and using sort of new technology and, and playing with new cameras and, and, and stuff like that, um, which might come across in this. Um, so yeah, this film is a, is a little thing that we made like right in the middle of lockdown um, when everything was feeling quite bleak and we were sort of quite miserable. We didn't really know what, what was ahead. Um, and I made it with, with my girlfriend, who's a fantastic writer. Um, she actually wrote the script for this. Um, and uh, she works in advertising um, and we'd seen like quite a lot of sort of feeble kind of not very impressive kind of brand responses coming out at the beginning of the lockdown period um sort of all saying the same kind of thing like I don't know if you saw that thing which was every COVID-19 commercial is the same um just sort of kind of everything's gonna be fine we'll get through this um so we wanted to have a go kind of making our own thing that was a little bit like that um and we realized that sort of one thing about British people is is we're very good at making memes and and sort of um poking fun at stuff um, and that was the sort of thing that we picked up on um, and we wanted to make a film about like how Brits respond to a crisis basically. Um, so yeah, that's what we made. Um, it, it kind of feels pretty much irrelevant now, which is funny because the world has obviously moved on a lot um, in the last like two weeks. Um, but yeah, um, we we this sort of in the middle of the lockdown period. So um, hopefully you'll recognise some of the stuff and the, kind of the, the visuals and the images that we used uh, to make it. Lovely. Thank you very much, Anthony. Right, okay, so I'm gonna share screen so that we can watch the video. There might be a bit of a delay, but uh, yeah, hang on or mute Zoom and play from the link in chat. Slowly, all at once, our sense of normal disappeared. And this unsettling, threatening enemy we didn't know we feared appeared. And suddenly, society and all the subtle structures we constructed to rely on turned to ghosts that couldn't touch us. And as much as the uncertainty unnerved us, every turn and twist and wordless list and person list, and nurses' merciless shift disturbed us. Numbers soared and hoarders hoarded, cases creeping unreported. People whispered, this will bring us closer, like the hoarding. We took it in our stride and tried to help each other cope and notice this. Our antidote to despair is hope. So we drowned out the dark cloud of dread with our thunderous clapping. And rainbows and windows remind us when rain shows Joy can happen. We praise the unacknowledged heroes who we saw would save us. And the horror films were wrong, because this apocalypse has made us into caring neighbors. And then slowly, all at once, something funny happened. I mean, really, actually funny. You just have to tap it, scroll, and there's a whole incredible wealth of words and pictures put up to uplift us. Open your news feed. Between the news beats, you'll see a ton of it. Because the thing about us Brits is, when this life gives us sh we make fun of it. You're working on making a massive lasagna. Sharing memes doesn't mean that we're taking this tragedy lightly. We make smiles to take back some control in these troubling times, and quite rightly. And yes, we're stressed, but you best bet we'll jest and joke till we're choking with troubles. Eccentric interest suggests the shared health is better than biting our knuckles. Humor's part of our armor. Exotic escapism strengthens our spirits and bonds us together, all laughing with nobody near us to hear it. The let's test. Among the best of sentences to settle on this. Settle in for a lot less guests. And better pop the kettle on. And, uh, 
uh, and then you will or won't uh, somehow or other. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so let's just go back to that. Claire, you're on my screen. So I'm, going to, hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come around and get everyone to introduce themselves in a mo. but just before that, tell us what you thought of the video. Me? Yes. Claire, yes. Oh, yeah. No, I loved it. It was brilliant. It's like, um, I think it's, it's almost like a little time capsule, isn't it? I can imagine, you know, it, people looking back on it in 20 years time and it being shown in classrooms and things like that. I think it just encapsulated everything about that particular um, period when everything was so intense, really, you know, but I think it's brilliantly edited. It's very sensitive um, while still being funny. You know, it's uh, it has all the kind of peaks and troughs that you that you expect when you watch when you watch a good piece of film. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Good, good work. Lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, Seely, tell us what you thought. I mean, everyone can say whatever they like, so they can give crits as well if they want. But yeah, it's nice. It seemed um, it's very dramatic at first and you get into it and you almost forget that this was so recent. It really feels like I'm watching something from God knows when and people are looking back and like, oh my God, did this really happen? And then you get brought back into the now and the humour and how we've made light of it and the memes and stuff. So it's got a really good pace and it's got good humour, but like a, a good message about what we're currently still going through, which is still quite shocking. So yeah, good piece. Yeah. Um, Laura, do you want to um, pitch in there? Yeah, it was really good. Like I never thought I'd say it, but I felt felt, felt nostalgic um, for a little bit watching it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was great. And I think um, it's just visually different. We've seen a lot of these lockdown things and it's just really visually different and stands out from anything I've seen that's been made during this time. So well done. It's really good. Fab. Thank you. And then finally, Pat, do you want to... Hello. Anything? Hi Kaz and hi everyone else. Thanks for inviting me along. I thought this was brilliant. I mean, I love the richness of it, the editing, the, the fun you've had with the effects and not just putting found footage on screen, but kind of designing it, um, designing a framework around it to, to own it properly, where we as agencies, we're all struggling kind of making content, making ads in lockdown, and we've all been faced with very similar challenges. And for one reason or another, we've not made it um, look as brilliantly as you have, even though obviously for us, there would have been restrictions around licensing. We could have still um, jazzed it up in the way that you have, and you've made it kind of one concise, consistent piece rather than it feeling disparate for all its, for all its kind of individual parts. Uh, no, I really loved it. And my attention span is so short now that we've been in lockdown forever. So it's really refreshing to see something like that. And within 10 seconds, you kind of get where the journey is going but yet it kind of is surprising and 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 grows and grows and grows so and the writing is amazing uh, i really love the writing and um yeah well done to both of you actually that's a, that's brilliant happy with that anthony sorry i was muted again um yeah thanks very much that's a good point. i really appreciate um i uh, really appreciate the, those words that's really kind of you Fabulous. Okay. Um, uh, thank you so much for putting it into Shiny. Um, I think that was a, a hit all round. Um, right, so let's get on to the panel discussion. So um, let us... So what we're, we're going to be looking at all sorts of things, but um, first of all, I think I need to say, Will from UMG can't make it. He's really, really sorry. He's got, had to go on to um, a virtual shoot, but he will be coming on to another Zoom, another Shiny Connect sometime in future. So sorry he's not here. But Claire can cover a lot of questions about music videos if people have them. So yeah. uh, fear not. Uh, so can people go around? Um, uh, actually, no, rather than that, I'm gonna, I'll start with Pat. Pat, can you explain who you are, what you do, and how um, you directors relate to you in your day-to-day -day life? I think I'm probably the best place to explain who I am. That's right. Thank you for coming to me that. I'm Patrick. I work at Havas London. I'm the head of film. And um, yeah, uh, I've been in advertising for forever, um, or despite my young looks. Um, and um, so we... In terms of the question was how we find directors, how we find young directors, new directors, rather than going with the roster of kind of the established production companies. And first of all, to to all of you, like um, unsigned um, new 
and or young directors out there, I think this is a this is the perfect time for you to to kind of to shine because the no pun intended um, because the the playing field has been completely leveled. I feel like everyone's got the same means at their disposal. Um, you you're not at a disadvantage against any other director who can only remote direct or who has to self shoot or create something from within their own home. So I think this is a very hopeful time for all of you where I feel like you'd be up against it more often than not when um, you're knocking on a door, but someone says, yeah, this is great, but you don't have the experience, but none of that matters now. This is kind of, uh, we're back to square one almost. This is the, the, it can be the dawn of time for, for filmmaking. I think we've seen so many changes already and so many of these um, kind of new techniques will survive this and we'll come out of it. And I think we'll, we'll all be working more closely and collaboratively together. And um, I think agencies have, have always struggled finding a way into kind of um, emerging talent without going through um, a conduit in the form of a production company. Um, obviously with in-house becoming more of a thing and independent unsigned directors becoming more of a thing, but it's still, there's still that barrier. And the first phone call is always to the production company and looking at the roster. And I know a lot of production companies are doing great work around um, uh, having younger rosters or um, like a, the kind of the, the, the emerging talent roster. But I feel there is, so much of a platform now for for everyone and um with obviously tiktok and instagram and instagram live that's kind of where we then start looking i was just gonna ask about that actually patrick because have us i don't know how many people know but have us in particular have a superb reputation for um uh, a, a very representative uh workforce so they they're really brilliant at diversion and uh inclusivity um things so there's there's uh so if you can get to have us uh, you're unlikely you're much less likely to um uh hit white privilege than you would do in a lot of places so that's fantastic yeah but, says um, the white man but yeah no it's, <laughs> it, 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 but, but, it, but then saying that how does anybody uh, actually manage to connect with have us in the first place i'm gonna uh, Celia, yeah. i'm gonna ask you something about this as well so Patrick, give us a bit and then I'll, I'll come to you. Um, on, a, on a talent, like advertising talent or directorial talent directorial level or both? Talent. Directorial. I know yeah. it's beginning to merge a bit. Yeah, now, yeah. They were directorial. No, no, it, it's, it is true to your point. Um, we're kind of very hot on the diversity and inclusion um, agenda. And I think Seekly can elaborate on that even, even more than I can. But um, it feels like in, in some parts of the building, it feels like you're almost in a normal place rather than um, at the whitest agency in town, which I think there, there are many of, and uh, it feels like there, there are corners where you look around and go, oh, this could be normal Britain, but we have to all do a lot more about that. But, um, and um, directorial talent, I think for me personally, um, follow me on Instagram and I'll follow you back and I'll see your content and I'll save you and I'll board you and I'll love you or not. But, um, Ideally, I will. And then um, for 1.4 is a great platform. So get in touch with Lindy Stout. Um, uh, obviously, Shiny and Kaz, <laughs> brilliant. Um, I think you have to kind of, you, you have to get to the, the right people like Little Black Book or, or Shots. Uh, everyone's got kind of open eyes and open ears to, to discover new emerging talent. Um, but for, for me personally, I would more often than not now find amazing content on weirdly on LinkedIn recently. So um, add me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, I think uh, I'd, I'd rather, I think Caroline was asking, can you get your, can you give your email address out? That's the wrong way for me because I, you'll just get lost in the deluge of emails, but um, Instagram, like follow me on Instagram and hit me up on LinkedIn as basic and, and boring as that sounds, but that's, that's the way. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Seekly, tell us about um, uh, your role at Habas, how you relate to, how often you relate to new directors, and then tell us about, because I know part of your job is specifically to go scouting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So um, my name is Seekly Kuzweo, I'm a producer at Habas. Um, I've work, I worked with Pat and 
and more recently I'm more focused on the digital side of things so that's everything from anything that's um, more graphic design led illustration as well as moving image so most of the time it is based on the smaller budgets and um, I think clients are used to well they're getting used to the more agile non-traditional way of working to make things work for the budget as well as the creative and um, so for me I think I've, I've had a lot of luck on Instagram actually um, as well as LinkedIn and then referrals. Referrals are absolutely great um, from anyone we've worked with in the past that was able to make it work, probably going back to them. And then if they say, actually, I've got a friend that's got this. So referrals are great. So always stay connected with your peers as well. Um, obviously, Shiny is great and they're doing their thing as well. Um, I think for me, even with my own career, it was starting somewhere, just finding the door anywhere. Um, I started to have us on reception and just mingled, ended up meeting people in production and worked my way to being a producer through that way. So any person, any door is a gateway into so many endless opportunities. And this is definitely the time where everybody is so active on their social media, we're restricted to not being outside as much as we want to. And it's a great time for everyone to get on your LinkedIn, be posting as much as possible. And YouTube is great as well. Just make sure you think you're content is out there for people to see and be able to engage with you. Um, I agree with emails aren't always the best way. Um, I think for us, especially from a creative agency, because we're always the middleman, we get inundated with emails. And as much as we'd love to, you don't always get to respond as fast as you want or et cetera. So yeah, LinkedIn, Instagram, if you can, and just, you know, any type of networking events, I try and be present as well. And that's sometimes where I meet people. Uh, that's fantastic. So, um, Secretly, would it be fair to say for directors who um, who don't who want to start getting work with uh, agencies that they should be looking for people with your job title, which is producer and maybe exec producer? Yeah, I think creatives can be a good shout, but yeah, anything from your heads of department like Pat, he always gives us recommendations as well, and obviously with a wealth of knowledge and experience. Um, your exec producers, producers in general. So yeah, I'd say that's definitely the best way for creative agencies anyway. We're able to push the, the narrative and find a way that we can work with you to sell you the best to the clients and be aligned as well. Fantastic, thank you. Right, Claire, I'm saving you till last. Laura, <laughs> I'm going to come to you now. So Laura, uh, I'll just preempt you a bit and tell everyone that you're an editor. Um, and a lot of directors may not know that editors and post houses are actually desperately keen to hook up with um, new directors. By the way, I'd just like to say new directors of any age. We'll come back to that. I know someone asked a question about it. But um, so editors, post houses really want to meet up with new directors. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and then tell us why you want to meet up with new directors and what new directors can be doing to go and make the most of that desire? Yeah, so I'm Laura Kearney Keys, I'm at Marshall Street. Um, so yeah, new directors are really important for us because, um, you know, once they start to develop, you know, they're going to be bringing in the work, you have a really close relationship with directors as an editor. So yeah, you want to sort of get with them at the beginning of your career really and grow together. Um, so the best way to really do it is come to us with a project. Um, Instagram as well is a really good way to get in touch with me or if I'm really busy, it will be getting in touch with the producers and they will just make sure that it gets like put past us. So yeah, it's just really, really good. Um, and it's, you know, we can bring something really, like our experience can really help you with your projects. And um, so yeah, that's why it's really important for us. And, and Marshall Street and indeed any post house, if they see talent that they like, are more than happy to go, I know you don't have much budget and we yeah. can help Definitely. out. Um, we, it's, I kind of like to take some time to work on, work on stuff which is low budget a lot of the time it's actually just really fun as well and um, you get you get like to use different techniques or you don't necessarily have like a big client that's trying to drive the project so I do a lot of um, personal projects and um, just working with new directors so yeah it's a lot of it's actually a lot of my best and most interesting work comes through that 
that, oh, brilliant. That's that's great to hear. Um, so I think as we go, I'm going to ask um, whatever way you would like new directors to get in touch with you. Would you pop it into chat? Because I've just got a little back channel note from Pat here that uh, he's put his IG in there and it's exploding. So, um, <laughs> so while we're on, if you would stick uh, whatever communication means you'd like people to use to get into chat. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. And now we'll go to Claire. So Claire, we had a bit of a chat about this the other day. So I'm going to ask you the question in a, a, a remolded way of how we talked about it. So Claire's a rep, so she'll explain what that is in a bit. Um, but she basically looks after, um, uh, you're the person in between a director and, um, and a brief basically, and a commissioner. Um, mm -hmm. and Claire has represented some of the world's very, very best, um, production companies. It is creme de la creme directors oh. that she reps and don't you? And, uh, <laughs> they're very, they are they're all very good <laughs> lots of talent talented bunch of bunch a bunch of people and I, th I think probably allowing for all the people that you're repping at production companies and the in independents you have maybe a hundred certainly over 50 but, definitely over 50 yeah but but hardly any of those directors that you rep are new directors even though you're really interested in new directors so you can you tell us why and set, it, this is about assessing expectations for new directors, really. Why is it so hard for a new director to get on the books of, of a really, of a world-class rep or indeed a world-class production company? Why is that a difficult thing? Um, well, I think particularly for me, I went out on my own, I think it was December. I had been head of music videos at Partisan for several years. And then I started my new company, Mouthpiece, which is, you know, predominantly director representation, which is what I do. And, um, you know, it's mainly working with production companies who I represent. And then they have a roster of directors, you know, everything from really established talent to new directors that they're nurturing as well. Um, but I, as a rep, I think it's, it's mainly a kind of a time thing, really, you know, in terms of being able to give everyone the time and attention they need when you're developing directors. I think it's something that um, you can absolutely do as a rep, but it needs to be almost like a three-pronged approach. You, need, uh, you definitely need, or a double approach, really, in that you need a really good exec producer or producer to work with the director as well. And I think it's something that you can't really do as a rep on your own because you're essentially working with all the record labels, bringing in all the new briefs, talking to the record labels about certain pitches and briefs and what they need. And you then obviously talk to the processes normally that you talk to the EP at the production company and the EP at the production company then advises and talks to the director about which particular brief or script will be good for them, you know, whether it's to do with a particular type of artist they want to work with or a budget they want to work with as well. So I feel it always works best as a kind of a, a duo, you know, a really good established rep with an exec producer so that you can nurture that director and bring them through themselves if you imagine if you're a director working outside of a production company you're kind of doing it all yourself and you're handling a lot of the production yourself so for me to kind of i guess it's a case of for me to give a pitch to a director and get them pitching if they win a job i need to know that they have the support system behind them to execute that job so you know it's um it's all very well winning the job but you really need to be able to then bring your treatment to real life you know and i think a lot of young directors struggle with that they write these amazing treatments but they actually don't really have any idea of how to make it or the expectations involved when they do go to, to make a piece of work with a professional company like Universal or Sony, you know? Um, yeah, there's two problems there, aren't there? One of them is that the client might love the idea, but the client also wants to know that they're going to get what they've been sold. And so they need to have confidence in, in the producer, whoever that is. Yeah. So it can't just be a thing that's going to get sorted out later. That's, that needs to be part of the sales pitch almost. And yeah. the other thing is, if uh, a producer is inexperienced, you, Claire, end up having to exec it, don't you? And, and, and you're, you don't have the time to do that. Well, so. exactly. That's it. I kind of end up almost, you know, repping and execing, which, you know, I have done in the past and is okay, but I don't necessarily always believe that it's the right way. I mean, I do have probably two 
or two directors, I think, at the moment that are unrepresented that I'm working with. You know, um, one of them is more experienced. He's just chosen to be freelance at the moment. So I, we have a couple of different production options for him, depending on which jobs he wins. And then a much younger director who, you know, is kind of feeding things out with a couple of people at the moment and seeing what way to go. But I just loved her work. So I thought, OK, I really want to work with her and kind of brought her on early. But it's not a hard, fast rule I have. You know, if I love someone's work, then I'll talk to them, maintain a relationship with them and say, look, I think your work's brilliant, you know, let's, let's talk. And if I have any pictures, I can bring them to you. But it's just something that I've become aware of as I've started doing this job is that ultimately you can write a brilliant treatment and have a great idea, but you, you need to have some sort of realistic support system around you to be able to execute that job if you, if you win it, you know, because you get a shot and it, it's a great when you do get a shot and you want to make it the best it can be, you know. So I think that's, that's the hard part for, for directors, I think, particularly young directors, is, is how to actually make the job once they, once they win it, you know. Yeah. So um, uh, let's assume that people are going... Uh, it might be really difficult, but I still, it's still my life's dream to have Claire Stubbs represent me. Uh, how do I go about trying to uh, persuade her? Um, yeah. How should people get in touch with you? Um, I think, yeah, emails, I think I agree with everybody else. I find quite hard. I tend to use them now day to day for like real, real kind of work process stuff. So talking to exec producers, talking to labels and keeping that very focused on, I guess, the process of just my day to day work. So when I go to almost have a break and watch something creative, I think, you know, Instagram is great. Um, definitely follow me on there and reach out there. Um, LinkedIn, you know, Twitter, anywhere, really. I think all those, all those things vimeo as well um is a really good platform i tend to go on to kind of um to find work i mean definitely email me as well i do always mark all the emails i get and go through them and tend to always try and look at the work but um it's it definitely uh, i think instagram is a good one yeah cool okay so um uh, and claire's details are on uh uh, are you, what are you, mouthpiece reps? What's your um, URL? Yeah, my handle, I need to change, change that. It's not very pro. <laughs> but I'll do that. I'll put it onto the chat now. Um, yes. But, so, you know, sorry. That's, I was about to say, it's, um, don't, be, don't be shy. Like, definitely reach out. But I think always try and understand people, you know, working as well and kind of doing their thing day to day. And that, you know, sometimes they might look and not reply. But I think you can always, there's a way of, you know, being persistent, but not being too too persistent there's a nice kind of balance there you know I always try and get back to everyone even though it's it's hard um but I do love to see stuff so please please don't be afraid to send me anything okay thank you Claire so uh see Claire let's come back to you and uh what kind of uh uh briefs are you seeing since lockdown what what's the work flow been like in the last two three months and what and are you seeing any changes in it yeah, I mean, I've been, oh, sorry, was that for me or something else? Oh, no, that was Cicla. So, um... <laughs> sorry, sorry, ha, ha, you go for it. Cicla <laughs> <laughs> or Claire? <laughs> <laughs> Our names are similar. <laughs> I think, um, I'm not sure for outside of agencies, but for us initially it was quite quiet just because no one knew, especially brand-wise, what was going to happen. Um, and then out of nowhere, everyone realised, okay, this is going to last longer than we think. And actually everyone is at home this is the time when they are engaged as especially online and i don't watch tv so i'm a bit biased um, but um then it started to really pick up and like anthony mentioned earlier with um the type of film that he created there were a lot of brands that were trying to get some type of response to address covid and everyone being at home and some were still using it sales opportunities and some of it was about connecting so it brought on like an influx of work, um, especially because I work on creative development, not just production as well. So from the creative development angle, there was a lot going on. Some things didn't get made, some things did. Um, obviously we're restricted, were restricted. I know the rules are easing up now with shooting anything. So relying heavily on, you know, um, stock footage as well as images. Um, a lot of things being um, illustrated and animated. So that's definitely increased in terms of the type of stuff we're doing now, but it's starting to relax again. And we're seeing a bit more of, okay, a shoot is possible within the next month, let's say, or a few weeks. So there's definitely gonna be a lot of work coming. I feel like it's given a lot of people um, a kick to kind of be like, okay, we need to 
get be more out there, be more present and connect more and engage more with people in different ways. So I think creatively it's going to make a big difference as well. That's fantastic news for uh, everyone uh, on this chat, I guess. Um, Laura, Pat, I'm going to come back to you in a minute, but Laura, as an editor, um, what I heard, I don't know whether it's right or not, at the beginning of lockdown, editors had to go into super overdrive because everyone was recutting old stuff and uh, desperately trying to get stuff out of the door. Is that what happened and what's happening now? Uh, I was definitely really lucky. I think it's been different for everyone, but um, to be, I worked on a project where they'd filmed some stuff for another project um, and they wanted to adapt that so that was really cool and what we actually did it was in a really weird way so we basically had to make the ad before they filmed the new stuff try and put phone footage in get it signed off by the client before they would agree to film any stuff anything um, and then the DOP like filmed it in his house with his kids and throughout the day we, he was sending us stuff we were dropping it in see if it worked so that was kind of a different way of working and quite fun and um, and then also like quite a few people got in touch with me just to say like I've got this project that I filmed ages ago and um, have you got any time to work on it so I'm T took on like another just personal project that I've been working on which has been really good to have that other sort of creative side of a documentary that I'm doing and um, which has been really fun and just been really strange because I've got to know the team really well but we've never met so we're really looking forward to like going to the pub and actually having a drink together. Mm -hmm. when yeah brilliant Thank you. So Pat, um, you mentioned in your intro about um, a level playing fields and uh, much more collaborative work. Um, are you, do you think that kind of thing is going to, uh, do you think clients are going to want that? I mean, there, there has been quite a lot of appetite for, you know, we care, we care, but is, have we all got a bit sick of hearing that from brands and beginning to feel that that's a bit not very correct? Yeah, especially because everyone's doing it and you become completely interreplaceable and you kind of blend into the mainstream. But I think the the good brands, the, the challenger brands have, have kind of stuck to their guns and, and try to be uh, daring and audacious throughout this. But I think we've gone from oblivion where people thought, oh, what, Corona? No, we're just going to do as we do, to a bit of a paralysis where everyone thought, oh, we can't do anything. And then there was an acceptance of the of the state and uh, kind of finding ways to do stuff. And I hope that we're heading into a renaissance where we just uh, wake up and do things better. We've had a job where we worked with three different production companies on one ad. I've never had that before. And everyone was kind of getting stuck in. And um, um, we chat often with the like agency heads and, and production heads in the production company. And I felt that we're all getting closer together because we're all in this together. I mean, everyone's got the same issue. It's not like, oh, it's a weather day, Who? Uh, why didn't anyone tell us about it? Or something else happened, but this it, is just global. So yeah. no one can blame the other person for this happening. I mean, we can all blame Boris for the shit we're in, but um, yeah. Do you think that um, uh, clients are going to be more interested in, um, uh, uh, so, no, I was going to ask, somebody in Q&A has asked, uh, can they pitch ideas to you? Um, and that's still not really a way to make things happen, is it? Tell us a bit no. about that. No, not really. Um, I mean, unless someone puts a brief out, it's difficult to, to answer that proactively because I've, I've had, it doesn't happen that often, especially not to us producers. I think creatives every now and then need, they'd get a proactive idea. Uh, it has to be absolutely amazing, unique and unseen for, for anyone to to kind of jump on it. It's really difficult because you don't obviously, as a, as a filmmaker, you don't know what is relevant to the agency, what's relevant to the brand, what's relevant to their strategy. It has to be something standalone and then it, it will be quite interreplaceable um, because why blanket bomb um, an idea? I think it's... It, that that bit is difficult. It's probably something where um, if you're a filmmaker and you've got an idea, you kind of need to get someone to to make the film, as, as silly as that sounds. But once you've got once you've got a film, um, then you can kind of use that to to leverage yourself and and build on that platform. But and and when you do that, bear in mind that ad agencies and ad execs 
kind of like seeing a 30 or 60 second uh, film rather than a five minute piece that they're going to skip through. Um, so we're basically saying here things like spec ads or spec anything, as long as it's short, are, is a really great idea. Are we? It's good for your real. real. I, I, yeah. I, I dare say no one, I'd be surprised if anyone would go, hey, but I've seen the spec idea, I'm going to turn this into my ad. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just to address this issue about age, um, and actually I think Claire's going to be a good person to answer this, seeing as you, you were actually in the business of selling directors to people. Um, new directors aren't necessarily young directors. Um, do you think there are particular issues around people being, I don't know, starting to moving into directing maybe in their 30s or 40s or, you know, 70s even? Pat's, Pat's shaking his head. Claire, <laughs> how do you feel about that? No, I, I don't think so. I think, um, I think, you know, it should be open to everyone. It is open to everyone. I think, you know, good ideas are good ideas and good execution is good execution. I think, you know, obviously music videos are... Uh, sorry, you know, they're very reactive, they're very reactive to culture, very reactive to the youth environment, you know, they are driven a lot that way. Um, and that's understandable, you know, for certain, um, for just the, the nature of the beast uh, th that they are, you know, but I think there's, there's music for everyone, you know, there's film for everyone, it's, it's culture, it's diverse, it's, you know, it should be for everyone. And it, it is, you know what I mean? I think you can find a way. It's just, I think about, if you're starting out as a director, slightly older I think you just need to try and find artists or music that speaks to you and that you feel you know will work well with the type of films that you make you know and I think if you can find that synergy between great imagery and great music anything can happen you know that's the fundamental of music videos really it's when that imagery connects with whatever music that might be so I think no I think they're more open than they were I think definitely uh, so age discrimination maybe not that much of a thing uh reels or your work speaks for you it speaks quite loudly for you yeah i think so i think they're more open than they were definitely i think just because of the nature of all the platforms that are out there now everything from instagram to vimeo to um tiktok to everything you know everyone's making moving image content and i think it's i mean it's crazy some of the you just have to go on tiktok to have a look and see there's all walks of life and ages and everything making stuff it's amazing i, I think it's brilliant and it's you know and i love that i think was it was it dame judy dench was doing stuff with her cousin that was just brilliant on tiktok he was teaching her how to how to dance and it was so great i loved it you know so i think um i think it's much more open than it used to be which i think is a, a good thing you know cool in terms of um, representation okay so we're getting very close to the end now so uh laura and Clay, i'm going to come back to you for the last two questions so i think what should we have uh So if someone's going to see Claire, someone's going to get in touch with you on LinkedIn, what are they going to say? And what should they, and what link should they do? And what should they have ready? And how are they going to impress you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many layers in that one. <laughs> um, yeah, just short bio, this is my latest work or their favorite piece of work really that they want to put forward that represents them best i'd say is the best thing i think to pat's point i think for us short everything 60 seconds max is the best thing we could do and um, just because it is advertising um otherwise we are skipping through a lot of it just because we have to <laughs> um but yeah just a little bit about you and your favorite piece of work or whatever you've done more most recently than anything and just be like i'd love to connect and talk to you at some point um, when my schedule's free, I'm very good at, like, I'll have coffees and meet with people and talk to them directly. Um, but obviously sometimes it, you are restricted on the base of, okay, what am I working on right now? And you're, sometimes you're just deep in that hole and not looking for what's to come after. But yeah, give, give us a shout and when we can, we will. So yeah. And give that. us some no-nos. What should people not do? Follow up every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or copy and paste. I don't like a generic message is fine, but some of them are just so obvious that it's like, yeah, you've just flooded everyone you could find with the same message. And um, I think for me, if you point out anything that's come out of Havas recently, 
or just be like, okay, this is the type of thing I do. I think you did something like this, or I feel like this brand that you work with might maybe take a liking to my style. I think that's quite a good way to get my attention as well and just I make it a bit more tailored. Personal. Yeah, exactly. I heard uh, show me that you know me is a really good way to start off an email. Hi, CK. <laughs> I saw you on China Connects and I love what you said. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Laura, let, let's finish up with you and let's, to, let's just do a very little bit on uh, how do you hear about new directors when you're when you were in uh, Marshall Street and people were chatting to each other and people were saying, have you seen this? Have you seen that? What sort of things people tend to talk about? Do, I mean, do you keep an eye on film festivals? Do you have a particular channel that you follow on Vimeo? On oh, the, you know? um, honestly, like, you know, I follow a lot of people in the industry on Instagram and it's just, all, I always look at the tags on stuff. So just kind of looking at stuff that I like, who's worked on it, what, who they've worked on other stuff with. I can get into quite a big sort of like scrolling through just to find who new people are. And a lot of the time people come to me. So just let yourself, let yourself be known basically. And if there's, and yeah, like I said before, like come with a specific project, tell me why it is you want, you'd like me to work on it. Um, like, what is it? Show me some of your work. Cause you know, obviously a lot of the time if it's low budget, it will just be me giving up my time. So, you know, sell your project into me and I'm always happy to look through stuff and um, like go for a coffee or um, yeah. And if you don't hear back from me, like get onto my producer because they'll make sure that I've um, looked at your email or whatever. So yeah. producers, brilliant. Right, I'm going to stop it now. Uh, uh, I know you can't have too much of a good thing, but I think mm -hmm. that's really time. So uh, let's stop it while everyone is having a brilliant time. Uh, thank you, you blooming wonderful panelists you're just brilliant thank you for giving your time uh, and sharing your expertise and your knowledge um i forgot to mention just to make sure that um uh claire gets absolutely inundated she does has been doing some commissioning for polydor so um that that happens with reps sometimes you might want to bear that in mind that they end up commissioning too so you yes, can make we do. <laughs> well, um, I'm happy to watch stuff send me stuff i, I, lo I love it Okay, I'm going to uh, just finish up with some other bits and bobs. Okay, let's just make that a full screen. So, uh, we depend on growing our community. So if you'd like to support us, just tell lots of people about Shiny, tell them they can join our mailing list. We try not to send it out too often. It just keeps people in touch. Uh, we depend on serving our community. So, um, Give it, we'll send out a survey afterwards and tell us what you like, what you didn't like, uh, who you want to hear from, uh, what subjects you'd like us to cover. Um, if you want to, um, Anthony's video was fantastic, but there really are lots of other fantastic videos as well. You can see them in our new Vimeo channel, which is Shiny Network Picks. And our next Shiny Connects is in two weeks time. Uh, it'll be a similar range of panelists. Um, hope to see you there. Thank you very much and you. goodbye. Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.